Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008, the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public. Welcome to Prairie Mosaic, a patchwork of stories about the arts, culture, and history in our region. Hi, I'm Bob Danback. And I'm Barb Gravel. On this edition, we'll travel to parks throughout North Dakota and Minnesota to see the lasting effects of the Civilian Conservation Corps and learn about the history of our region. On the banks of Lake Superior, the Civilian Conservation Corps left an incredible legacy in Gooseberry Falls State Park. The beautifully crafted stone buildings stand as a testament to the hard work of the young men who enhanced the natural beauty of Minnesota. It's a great place to come in the summer and enjoy being by the lake. In the winter, we have over 17 miles of ski trails and snowshoe areas. And then in the fall, you can come and see the colors. The beginning of the land, about 600 acres, was purchased in 1933 by the state. And in May of 1934, the first CC arrivals came. And that first camp was located down here by the mouth of the river. And that fall, the first members of Camp 2710 arrived. And that was kind of the beginning of the park. They started making trails. Um, some of the buildings, including the one behind me, started being built. And Gooseberry has just continued on since then. It became a park in 1937. And today we have over a half million visitors who come throughout the year to visit us. I think life for the CCC boys was really good here. You know, they came, they felt they had a job, they were learning new skills, they were supporting their family, and it really was a community. It's, it's interesting to think about what it would have been like for them and uh, how close that these guys got to one another. We have over 80 structures here. So we have a lot of different kind of lookout areas, lots of stone switchbacks and stairways. And one of the biggest structures that they did was what we call the castle in the park or the gateway plaza. And that's where when visitors came, they could park at the top of that, come down to view the falls and there are restrooms there. And that they started building in 1936. It was the longest running project that they did. A lot of these boys that came, they were farm boys or town boys, and they didn't know the skills of masonry and logging and putting, you know, carpentry, putting things together. They had local men, they were called LEMs. They were men from the community that had the skills, and they would train these new CCC enrollees how to do everything. And there's even a quote from one of our enrollees who said, without these men, we would have been completely lost. One big project that they did was working on the picnic flow. And the picnic flow is this big, ancient lava flow of just basalt rock, but very beautiful, very scenic right along the lake and you get a good view. They built over 30 picnic tables, benches, grills, and water fountains. All of our stone stairways were CCC built. There's a water tower that exists here that they built, a couple of pump houses, their ice house, um, just there, you know, there are these little scattered remnants of everything they did and of their life here too. Winter on the North Shore is just something everybody should experience. The water itself, the lake, kind of takes on this new life formation. The waterfalls usually freeze mostly and we'll get some really unique ice structures. And then we have ski trails, groom ski trails, um, snowshoe trails that are really fun to get out on and we do a lot of uh, winter programming as well. The neat thing about visiting any park on the North Shore and Gooseberry, I always tell people, you know, whether you come here and it's a rainy day and there's a big storm or something, Lake Superior always has something to show off, whether it's great big waves or just this large glass, you know, body of water. We're also very privileged that we have um, 
five naturalists during the summer season. So we're able to offer a variety of programs from guided hikes to guided accessible strolls on paved trails to campfire and evening programs. We're able to do a lot and do a lot for everybody and continue to do programming throughout the winter. Gooseberry has a really unique geological story. You know, it goes back from millions of years ago when the continental rift was created and throughout this whole area, lava kind of spewed out and cooled, creating these big kind of rocky basalt beaches that we have that's pretty unique for this area and for Lake Superior. And we also have not only one, but five waterfalls. So people can come and explore the two lower falls, the middle falls, the upper falls, and hike inland up about a mile to the fifth falls. We also have different trails that expand north where you can kind of get up over the ridge and start seeing some unique forest plants and some uh, different maples and different types of tree species as well. So, you know, Gooseberry offers a lot, whether you just want to enjoy being by the big water or you want to go and explore the woods as well. People who served in the CCC, when they were getting ready to close up camp and a lot of the enrollees were leaving the camp, one of the guys wrote, the thousands of people who will use this area in time to come may give us little praise for our efforts, but will little matter as long as we can justly be proud of saying, I helped to make this park what it is today. Little did he know it wouldn't be thousands of visitors. It would be millions of people coming to this park. And you know, we have a CCC statue here. We do a lot of CCC hikes. We give them praise and we remember and tell their stories and how much their story is still alive today. The rugged beauty of the Dells of the St. Croix River which straddles the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin, has drawn visitors from as far back as the 1860s. Join us now for a tour of this breathtaking park. We are at Wisconsin Interstate Park in St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin. This is Wisconsin's oldest state park. It was established in the year 1900. We are at Interstate State Park in Taylor's Falls, Minnesota. This state park has a history that spans back to 1895 when it was first created. A lot had been happening in the river valley leading up to the establishment of the interstate parks, including uh, beaver and fur trapping and trading, a long logging history, um, excavation of the rock in this area, and already the start of tourism. So citizens uh, thought it would be in their best interests of both communities to preserve the scenic beauty of the Dells of the St. Croix River. Specifically to protect some basalt cliffs along that riverway that have been here for over a billion years. One of the treats is to explore what was carved into those basalt cliffs many years later, and those are our glacial potholes. We talk a lot about the Ice Age here in Interstate Park. Meltwater from that Lake Superior lobe of ice had formed a lake at the ice margin called Glacial Lake Duluth. Um, that meltwater had nowhere to go, and all that meltwater began crashing down through this valley. This river was moving so quickly that in backwaters or in eddies, the current would begin to swirl, forming whirlpools. And glacial debris that had been picked up by the moving ice of the glacier would get trapped in the swirling water of the whirlpools, and that debris would begin to swirl around and around, um, forming a liquid drill which would actually begin to drill into the solid basalt below, leaving behind, eventually, some very smooth-sided, um, round holes in the rock. These are known as glacial potholes. And those are a real treat. You can walk above them, around them. There's even a pothole that you can walk inside of. When you come here to Interstate Park, you immediately see these stone structures and you just get that feel of the history of the park. And those big blocky structures and the big log beams um, really kind of feel like you're transporting back in time a little bit. It was the Civilian Conservation Corps and the men of Camp Interstate that developed Interstate Park and made it uh, available to park users. So CCC workers that we had here on the Minnesota Interstate State Park side were coming from the camp based out of the Wisconsin Interstate State Park side. Their charge was to establish the park without harming any of the natural scenery. So they didn't use 
bobcats and backhoes and large dump trucks and things. They did the work by hand. The stone that was used in all of these buildings is the, the natural basalt rock that we have in this area along the St. Croix River. They uh, learned from some of the Native American um, method of removing this rock. Um, here they would start a fire on the rock. They would keep that fire burning for perhaps 24 or 48 hours. Once that rock was good and hot, they had a bucket brigade of men. They would actually pass buckets of cold water from either our Lake of the Dalles here in the park or from the St. Croix River. They would dash it on the hot rock. It would um, shatter the rock enough so that they could pry it apart using crowbars and other hand tools. They would remove that rock from the path. Then they would bring in crushed trap rock to line the trail. And then in areas where um, erosion might be a problem or safety might be a concern, they would place stone stairs using the same uh, basalt rock. And I'm told that some of these um, stone stairs weighed up to two tons. So a tremendous amount of work um, that we're still enjoying today. The St. Croix River Valley is a very diverse place. So if you're here in the springtime, we have a wonderful show of wildflowers. We have a lot of spring warblers that migrate through at that time of year. If you're here in the fall, the fall color display is absolutely beautiful. The scenery from those basalt cliffs at the north end of the park is just stunning. So it's a beautiful place to take pictures. If you go to the south entrance of our park, we have 37 campsites, so camping is fun here. We also have a large picnic area and about four and a half miles of trails to explore and enjoy. There is so much to see and do in a very small package here. Interstate Park started out a half an acre in size. It's grown to almost 1,400 acres. People come to Wisconsin Interstate Park and they are surprised by the rocky terrain that we have here by the River Gorge, um, referred to as the Dalles of the St. Croix. There's opportunities for camping. We have about 85 family campsites. There are picnic areas, uh, nine miles of hiking trails. There's a lake, Lake of the Dells, that provides an opportunity for swimming. There's canoeing opportunities, boating opportunities, fishing on both the St. Croix River and Lake of the Dells. As far as the wildlife, what you might expect to find here, you will. Um, White-tailed deer, some black bear, uh, coyotes, foxes. As far as birds, we have probably 250 different species of birds that will be here at one time or another, perhaps migrating through along the St. Croix River corridor or um, nesting or overwintering here. It's a unique partnership that we have. We're all working towards the same common goal. I'm hoping to invite visitors here and um, educate them about this area and instill in them an appreciation of the very unique area that can be found um, right here in the St. Croix River Valley. Icelandic State Park near Cavalier, North Dakota is one of the unknown treasures of the state. The park has boating, fishing, and swimming, and a museum that tells the story of Icelandic settlers who made Northeast North Dakota their home. Some people say it's the best kept secret in North Dakota or in this part of the region. Icelandic State Park really has three main segments. One being the ethnic diversity that uh, is told in the interpretive center here. And that goes back from the 1870s to the 1920s. This part of North Dakota was settled before the railroad. So it's very unique in the fact that if you look at a lot of settlements along railroad paths, you'll have large ethnic groups such as Bismarck with the German Russian. This being an Icelandic area, most people came by wagon, horse, walked, ox cart. And so with the Gunluxons and everything, Icelandic State Park was established. The Heritage Center kind of goes up back from a, a seed planted from G.B. Gunluxon, and he talked about the ethnic diversity, and the Northeastern North Dakota Heritage Association built the Pioneer Heritage Center to tell that settlement period from 1870 to 1920. The other side of that with the, the Gunluxons and GB Gunluxons, the big significance of the nature preserve. And so right now we're expanding to include that vision of his, not only telling the ethnic diversity and how the pioneers prospered, but we're also telling the natural world. So people can come here, use their five senses, 
what they can see at Icelandic State Park and in the region, as well as the natural history, what animals used to be here, what animals are here today, how are animals being reintroduced, and how are they surviving in populations as our population expands. Right beside the Pioneer Heritage Center is our Pioneer Village, and the Gunluxen House and Homestead is original to the site. All the other buildings have been brought in, the log cabin, the Cranley School, the Acra Hall, and the Halson Church, and those are key buildings and each play a role in how that Pioneer community was developed. The second part is the Gunluxen Nature Preserve, and that's North Dakota's first nature preserve. The Gunluxen family knew of those very significant biological features and wanted to set that land aside. And there's very significant biological features there. And it's really not touched except for by trails and maintenance so that uh, teachers, professors, students, and public can come and, and see the changing of the landscape. The third part of the park is basically the recreation, and that gets into Lake Rinwick and our campground. We get around 100,000 visitors a year, and anywhere from seven to 12 countries and different nations come here for the beach, for the recreation, for family vacations, for family reunions, and also to uh, study the ethnic diversity. We average around 7,000 camper nights, so if you look at you know, May to September, we're talking roughly 100 campers a night, and sometimes that fluctuates up into the 7700s. The large part of what we have here at Icelandic State Park is responsible because of the Northeastern North Dakota Heritage Association. That association formed the Pioneer Heritage Center in 1986 and when it, that vision came about and in 1989 when it was uh, finished and completed. That was all by donations. That was all by the Northeastern North Dakota Heritage Association coming together, forming that, overseeing the project. The state's involvement was overseeing that and more of the park manager and assistant manager's role of just interacting with that association. And all of the buildings that have been brought in are all a part of that association, being key members, bringing that in. Each has a person that oversees those buildings and works with myself and the state parks to maintain those. And without that interaction, what you see here today at Icelandic State Park wouldn't be possible. This is your heritage. You can let it be forgotten or you can make it live on to inspire future generations. The headwaters of the Mississippi River near Bemidji, Minnesota have long been a major attraction for summer tourists. At Itasca State Park, you can walk on the rocks and over the shallow stream that actually is the headwaters of the Great Mississippi River. It's a great place to work, but the hardest part is everyone when they're here, they're on vacation. <laughs> Atasca State Park is Minnesota's oldest state park. Um, it began in 1891. It was set aside by the state legislature after a big push from a guy named Jacob Brandenburg Brower, who came to this area and found that it was a very important spot that should be preserved for future generations. One thing is that the park is very large. It's over 32,000 acres, so there's definitely a lot of places to get out and explore. Everything opens by Memorial Day weekend and goes through fall colors, which typically is about mid-October. But the park is open year-round, and so people can come to the park any time of the year. Each year we have around a half million people that visit Itasca State Park. We have uh, very good visitor numbers that come from the state of Minnesota as well as North Dakota, Canada, Iowa, Illinois, the surrounding states, as well as from all over the United States and countries from all over the world. They come to this area for a wide variety of reasons. Some come just to see the headwaters of the Mississippi River. Others will come to camp, bike, hike. In the fall, we have a deer hunting season that goes on, as well as when we get into winter seasons, we have uh, skiing, cross-country skiing and snowshoeing. Um, we have uh, year-round um, housing in the park so people could stay here. We actually have one of our campgrounds open to primitive camping in the wintertime too, so you could camp here year-round if you wanted to get into the winter months as well. There's plenty to do whether you're here in the summer, the spring or fall or winter, and it's a good representation of what northern Minnesota used to look like all the way across. Darian Lee has the sweetest girl next door personality with a voice that stops you in your tracks. She's recorded in Nashville and has big plans for her musical future. Catch her on Prairie Musicians, then see her live as she tours the country. 
can't tell me that you love me and then curse out my name to everyone around you you can't be fake and think you earn my respect no i ain't a fool in your game for you to play with the yeah boy this song's about you shades and we're all ready to go heading to the beach just my girls and me we're all wearing our high pink bikinis no care in the world cause it's summertime we're cruising on the beach in my new jeep we got nowhere that we gotta be just my friends and me we're jamming to the radio we're screaming words and songs that we don't know going anywhere we want we're in the summertime, sitting in my mind. Oh, sweet, sweet summertime. Feet in the sand, we got no day plan. Just sitting here getting our tan. And maybe we'll find some cute boys all right. We're cruising on the beach in my new Jeep. We got nowhere. to the radio we're screaming words and songs that we don't know going anywhere we want to go it's we're in the summertime to my mind oh sweet sweet summertime I dreamed about it all year hey it's finally Gotta make it last, cause it always flies by too fast. So let's go cruising on the beach in my new Jeep. We got nowhere that we gotta be, just my friends and me. We're jamming to the radio. We're screaming words and songs that we don't know. Going anywhere we wanna go. Cause we're in the summertime, sitting in my house. Jim. 
jamming to the radio. We're screaming words and songs that we don't know. Going anywhere we want to go. Cause we're in the summertime sitting in my mind. Oh, sweet, sweet summertime. Oh, sweet, sweet summertime. If you know of an artist, a topic, or an organization in our region that you think might make for an interesting segment, please contact us at Prairie Mosaic at prairiepublic.org. You can watch this and other episodes of Prairie Mosaic on Prairie Public's YouTube channel and follow Prairie Public on social media as well. I'm Bob Dambeck. And I'm Barb Gravel. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Prairie Mosaic. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008, the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public.